Hi there. Today, we're going to talk about the church. What does the red letter say about the church of God? Matthew 6, 16 through 19. Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And then whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew eighteen fifteen through 17. If your brother sins against you, then you just go and show him his fault just between the two of you. And if he listens to you, then you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, you take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, then you tell it to the church. And then if he refuses to listen even to the church, well, just treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Revelation 2, 1 through 7, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance, and I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and you have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. You repent and do the things that you did at first. And if you do not repent, then I will not come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But if you have this in your favor, you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation 2, 8 through 11. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, and who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer, I tell you, the devil's going to put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. But you be faithful, even to the point of death, and then I will give you the crown of life. So he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And he who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. Revelation 2 12 through 17, to the angel in the church of Pergamon, write, these are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, 
Yet you remain true to my name, and you did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you have those who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will also give him a white stone and a new name written on it, known only to him who received it. Revelation two eighteen to 29 To the angel of the church in Tiathara write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds and I and your love and your faith and your service and your perseverance and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and by her teaching she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she's unwilling. So I will cast her into a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her to suffer intensely unless they repent of their sins. And I will strike her children dead, and then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds." Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teachings and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold on to what you have until I come, to him who overcomes and does my will to the end. I will give authority over the nations, and then he will rule them with an iron scepter, and he will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I have received authority from my father, I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches." Revelation 3, 1 through 6. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, then I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. And they will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. And I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his, nature, his name before my Father and his angels. So he who has an ear, 
Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation 3, 7 through 13. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true and who holds the keys of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And then what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door, but no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And I will make those who are of this synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but they are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. And since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I also will keep you from the hour of trial that's going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. You hold on to what you have so that no one can take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. And then I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven. From my God, I will also write on him a new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation three fourteen to 22. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the A.M., the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. Well, I wish you were either cold or hot, hot or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot, cold nor hot, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, well, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness, and then salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Now those whom I love I rebuke and I discipline, so to be earnest and repent, here I am. I stand at the door and I knock and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me in my house, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I'm going to stop there. And I hope you enjoyed the red letters that Jesus wrote. Have a great day. Bye-bye.